Hello and welcome to Dr. Health and More Tutorials. My name is Dr. Rebecca Omokaru and today we'll be talking about bronchiolitis. Let's get started. What is bronchiolitis? Bronchiolitis is a viral infection that causes the small airways in the lungs to become narrow. The small airways we're referring to are the bronchioles and the, due to this narrowing of the airways, it makes breathing difficult. The child cannot get air out. I said child because bronchiolitis commonly affects children under age two, especially during the winter months, October to March. And it is the leading cause of serious respiratory illness in the lower, lower tract. For medical professionals, we like to think of bronchiolitis as an upper respiratory tract infection that evolves to cough, wheeze, respiratory distress, bilateral basal crepitations, and a fever that is less than 39 degrees centigrade. In very young babies, it can cause apnea, and this could be the only sign of bronchiolitis in such babies. I made a simple mnemonic to help you remember all the, the signs and symptoms using the word bronch, bronch from bronchiolitis. So think of B as bilateral basal crepitations. That is what B stands for. B stands for bilateral basal crepitations. R stands for respiratory distress. The O is hot and it's a fever, usually less than 39 degrees centigrade. The N stands for noisy breathing, which is the wheeze from them being unable to get the air out. And C stands for cough. I'll go say that again. B for bilateral basal crepitations, R for respiratory distress, O for fever, less than 39 degrees centigrade, the N for noisy breathing, and the C for cough. What is the pathophysiology of bronchiolitis? You should know that the common virus that causes bronchiolitis is the respiratory syncytial virus. There are other viruses that can cause bronchiolitis, but RSV is the commonest virus responsible. And how does it affect the lungs to cause bronchiolitis? The first thing is you should understand is that when we take, we breathe in air, the air goes down through our windpipe into two main bronchi, the right and the left. The right and the left bronchi then di divide into smaller wind air um, passages, which are called the bronchioles. The bronchioles end up in the alveoli, right? So now the bronchioles are just as tiny as trees. I'm going to show a picture later that illustrates this, but it's important for us to just get a picture of what it is. Air goes in through your nostrils into your trachea, which is your windpipe, from your windpipe, it goes into the divides into two bronchi, the right and the left bronchi, in, which goes into the right and left lungs. Those bronchi divide into the bronchioles. The bronchioles end up in the alveoli responsible for air ex, um, oxygen exchange. Now, when there's a respiratory tract infection and there's RSV in the nostrils causing the catar the runny nose, also known as coryza, the RSV can also go down into the lower respiratory tract and affect the bronchioles. It, how it affects the bronchioles is that it makes them swell and it destroys the cells lining the inner, the epithelium, that's the inner lining of the bronchioles, becomes swollen. And with the swelling, there's also secretion of mucus. In addition to that, there's a tightening of the muscles around the bronchioles, which all of these, the bronchospasm, the swelling of the cells and the mucus secretion narrows the airway, narrows those bronchioles. And in narrowing them, it's difficult for air to leave the lungs, right? It's difficult for air to be expelled. You should also know that the dead cells as well as the mucus also clog, they 
the alveoli, um, the alveoli. That means they go down. I told you that the bronchioles lead to the alveoli. So they fall into the alveoli and clog it. When they clog it, the alveoli is unable to exchange oxygen between the lungs and the blood, right? So this makes means the child is having a narrow passage as well as a poor ability to exchange oxygen. All of this makes breathing difficult. The child starts to breathe faster. And when the child is breathing faster, is losing more fluid. He or she is losing more fluids, which makes them dehydrated, which is, this is why um, adequate rehydration is very important in such children. So we'll take a look at some pictures that can help us understand everything that we've talked about. Um, this is a normal bronchial tube, right? You can see the normal epithelium, the normal tissue. You see how wide it is. These are the smooth muscles that surround the bronchioles. They are smooth muscles and the bronchioles end up in the alveoli, just as we talked about. Now, what happens during bronchiolitis? You can see that there is necrosis and loss of the epithelium in this area, as well as mucus and inflamed tissue. Then you can see, look at the smooth muscles here, how they are well spread. But look at here, they've tightened around the bronchioles and look at the alveoli are overinflated with trapped air. So bronchiolitis is an obstructive airway disease. There's a narrowing of the passage, bronchospasm, mucus secretion, all of these contribute to obstruction and the patient is unable to expel the air out. This is another, um, let's look at another picture. So in bronchiolitis, there is a narrowing of the airways because of the swelling of those cells caused by the respiratory syncytial virus. So this is a normal bronchial. You can see how wide it is. You can see the muscles, everything looks good right now. So when there is an irritation from either from the virus, right, the muscles also tighten. There is bronchospasm. Muscles tighten. Then there's swelling of the cells lining the bronchioles. This, so first thing is the bronchospasm will make the airway narrow. After that, the swelling of the cells, the lining of the bronchioles, when they become swollen, they also narrow the airways. Then the mucus secretion starts, and this contributes to further narrowing of the airway. All of this makes, contributes to the obstruction and makes it an obstructive airway disease, just like that is similar to asthma. I didn't say like, I didn't say it is asthma, it's similar to asthma. So what are the symptoms of bronchiolitis? We can still derive some from the bronchial we talked about, right? Bilateral basal crepitations, respiratory distress, um, fever, less than 39 degrees centigrade, noisy breathing, the wheeze, as well as um, cough. So the thing, the others, we said it's an upper respiratory tract infection that spread into the lower respiratory tract. So what are the first symptoms we'll see? The child will present with this stuffed up or runny nose, a mild cough and a low grade fever. So think of it as CRF, cough, runny nose and fever. Cough, runny nose and fever are the first signs. And later it proceeds to difficulty in breathing. This difficulty in breathing can present as tachypnea, that's fast breathing. It can present as chest wall retraction. The child's chest caves in between and under the ribs. It can also as intercostal and subcostal retractions. You can have nasal flaring where the child's nostrils, nostrils spread out with every breath. There's wheezing, there could be trouble drinking and feeling tired, that's lethargy or short-tempered, irritable. They could, um, you, we said that um, there's difficulty exchanging oxygen in the alveoli, so that could contribute to cyanosis, and this is a bluish discoloration around the mouth, the lips, and the fingernails. And in very young children, babies, right, they, there could be complete absence of breathing, that's apnea. So what, how do we assess a child that presents with these symptoms? That has cough, runny nose, fever, and now we check, examine the child. How do we, what do we do, right? Um, we have to take a history, know about how the symptoms started and how it's been. 
then we examine the child with very with the emphasis on capillary refill time. We want to look at the respiratory rate. That will determine what we'll do next if we're referring or telling the patient to go home. We want to look at the heart rate. We want to look at the chest for intercostal and subcostal retractions. It's also very, very important to check the oxygen saturation in any child with suspected bronchiolitis. After this assessment is done, we must refer this type of children. Any child that has apnea must be um, referred. Either the parents told you they saw the apnea or you saw it yourself, you must refer that child. If the chest retractions are very marked or severe, you have to refer. Or that child is grunting, you have to refer. If the respiratory rate is greater than 70 breaths per minute, you must refer. Central cyanosis, and an oxygen saturation less than 92%, you must refer. If on assessment, just looking at the child, this child looks seriously unwell, you must refer that child to um, a specialist, a tertiary center. What are the investigations? We already said we're going to do the oxygen saturation. So we'll check pulse oximetry. Um, that's the main thing we do. The viral trust swabs are usually done in, this, in secondary care. We don't do chest x-ray and uh, we don't chest x-rays or a blood test because the chest x-ray could mimic a pneumonia and blood tests are not necessary as we said. We only do the chest x-ray if on you check the temperature, the temperature is more than 39 degrees centigrade, then you do a chest x-ray or if you listen to the chest and you find that the, there are focal um, crepitations, then you can refer, I mean, you can do the chest x-ray, sorry. So chest x-ray is if the fever is greater than 39 degrees centigrade or if there is focal crepitation. How do we manage bronchiolitis? I say it's, think of it as four Fs. F, 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 F. Food, fluid, fever, face mask for oxygen. So you want to make sure this child is having adequate fluid and nutrition. The temperature is well controlled. You can, if the, if the, um, the temperature, that, if the child's fever is affecting the child and causing significant distress, we can give some acetaminophen. And then if the, um, yeah, that's it. Then if you're referring the child to the hospital, that is when you give oxygen, especially when the oxygen saturation is below 92%. So if you're referring the child, you don't just refer the child without oxygen, make sure they are going with oxygen. So you can also tell the parents, reassure the parents that um, this illness typically lasts a week, one to two weeks, and the peak is between three to five days of onset. Now for parents, what should you do? Watch out for. You should always see your doctor if your child is having trouble breathing, has a poor appetite, has cold symptoms that have become severe, or a shallow cough that continues through the day or the night. So try any child that has trouble breathing, any cough, symptoms of cold that are getting worse, you really should see a doctor at that time. Um, so in summary, bronchiolitis is an upper respiratory tract infection that spreads to the lower respiratory tract, that's the bronchioles, and RSV is the main causative virus. The others are adenovirus, the symptoms include bronchial, bilateral basal crepitations, respiratory distress, fever, wheeze, cough, apnea. Treatment is supportive with adequate fluid and nutrition support, and you should refer serious cases with a respiratory rate greater than 70 cycles per minute or oxygen less than oxygen saturation less than 92%. Sorry. All right, thank you very much. So these are my credits from my images. Thank you. Bye. So um, you can always join my tutorial, Dr. Health and More Tutorials. Please visit drhealththenmore.com. And I'm also available on all social media handles, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, at Health Then More, and Facebook, Health Then More. Thank you.